I think in the last couple of hours, the context of my presentation has changed because um, this was about giving you all the information about how old are issues around um, social isolation, financial isolation, the whole issue around the poverty and the financial inclusion agenda. But it's becoming more for me in terms of looking at the evidence that I've got from two or three different areas is building the case for change. It is about health boards becoming much more accountable in terms of looking at the wellbeing agenda and in terms of um, financial inclusion. So um, I'll give you that, I'll leave you with that thought actually, because what this presentation does is give us a feel for our respective counties in terms of the economic vulnerability of each county. Now there are a lot of statistics here and I'm sure that we will be sending these presentations out to everybody, to all the delegates today. And if I can start with issues, and this has all been drawn from all the partnership work that's been fundamental in developing single integrated plans in each of our counties. And then when we look at Carmarthenshire, there are some surprising elements in Carmarthenshire. Carmarthenshire would be seen for the outsider to be a fairly affluent area, particularly in terms of some of the areas we have within it and the beautiful landscape that we have in the north of the county, etc. But if you look at the average household income there is 5.6% lower than the average household income figure for Wales, and is actually the sixth lowest out of the 22 local authorities in Wales. So the whole element of all these statistics actually is what we do with them. This will, these these will, will be influencing the health board element in terms of how we influence the development of credit unions. And then you see that slightly over 42% of the county households have an income which is below the Carmarthenshire average. And then in terms of housing benefits, administered 52 million of housing benefits for 2009-10. It's a huge element, but a four million pound increase from the previous year. So the landscape is changing in terms of the, of the whole issue around financial inclusion. Large parts of the county are in fewer poverty. That is probably consistent with large parts of Wales. And I'm glad today that we've got colleagues from Ceredigion actually giving us a, a taster of what's been done in Ceredigion around fewer poverty. And the Debt and Advice Project in Communities First is in Llanelli. I'm glad again Llyr and his colleagues are here today from Communities First. Um, dealt with debt of around 1.38 million during the year. So I think I was talking to Llyr earlier on and I think there's about 12 areas, Llyr, is there? Across Carmarthenshire, mostly on the Llanelli, Armenford and, Tr and Trimsaran areas. And I think you, you quoted the figure, 22,000 people living in um, Poverty, if, if that's the right word. I'm not, I'm not keen on the poverty word, but obviously it is the word that obviously means a lot to people because people do live in that circumstance. And the key area as well is the impact on children. If you look at that in terms of the impact on the children, we have in Carmarthenshire 70,800 living in working, uh, workless household and the impact it has on them. Add to that the dimension of chronic illness across Carmarthenshire based on, the, you know, we, like Ian says, quite eloquently in terms of you don't change generations of issues around chronic illness, for example. You will not deter people who worked in heavy industry in Clenetley, Armenford, for a number of years not to develop chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, extreme cases of bronchitis, for example. And we do have pockets, and we will have to live with that for a number of years whilst we try and promote the health promotion agenda. What was significant, because I've been pretty sort of focused on credit unions and financial inclusion for the last week or so, thinking about this conference, but what was significant, that I saw a paper around safeguarding a report that's going to our health board and um, actually going there tomorrow. And it's surprising how much we're already doing to support people who are vulnerable because of their financial situation. And I was pleased to see that on a four counties basis, for example, we've got an integrated family support service. Never th did I think that that was issues of financial well-being, but it is a fundamental area part of that. The Flying Start Health Visitor Scheme, the Families First Scheme, the Pembrokeshire Emotional Health Group, these are all areas that we're already working with. So we've got a baseline from which to work. Secondly, in terms of Ceredigion, again, one of the safest places to live in. I've always told the Community Safety Partnerships, that is, it's the safest place to live in Wales. But again, it does not mean that there are areas of deprivation in terms of the average household income. Again, eighth lowest in Wales. And the average annual income for employee jobs in Cerdillo is second lowest in Wales. 
and there's a lower proportion of people in full-time employment than the Wales and GB, GB averages. Again, these are statistics, but I know there's a fundamental shift in terms of the work that's going on in Ceredigion. The work of the local service board has always been looking at issues around the poverty agenda, and I was told today that there is a subgroup now looking specifically uh, from the LSB, led by the leader, I think, from the from Ceredigion County Council, to look at the whole issue in terms of the, the, the poverty agenda. Now, during the time the last week, I've learned a lot of words. That this, is, this was one that got me going, was lower super output areas. And I asked for a colleague in Pembrokeshire County Council whether she could give me a very brief description of what that meant. She confused me even more. But the good news is, I think I got the gist in terms of what we mean by lower super areas, and I'm more than happy to share that with you later on quietly because I'd have to read it to you word by word. But in a serious note is that the two most deprived areas in Ceredigion are within Cardigan, south of the county, and that falls into the sort of 20% most deprived LSOA areas in Wales. Issues around children again, in terms of you can see the areas of the 13.5% of children aged between 0 to 18 and 15.8% of those aged 0 to 4 are living in households receiving out-of-work benefits. And there's a cluster of benefits that you can see that people are receipt of. Aberystwyth, well known in terms of issues around and the positivity around our being a university town, they have 23% of their households are suffering fuel poverty. And I know there's been a community first area, so Pemparke, for some time in, in Aberystwyth. So you have a mix in terms of what these counties promote. And then the highest rates of economic vulnerability and life-limiting illness around um, Ceredigion, you'll see Cardigan, Lampeter, Llandysil and Tregaran. That might be surprising, of course, Tregaran again was a community's first area at one stage in terms of the Sinterland. Pembrokeshire, in terms of an area I know very well, in terms of unemployment, you can see the 10.4% of Pembrokeshire's population are unemployed, and the fundamental figure here for me is that 21% of those unemployed are long-term unemployed, have been out of work for more than 10 years. Ian can support me this, he also lives in Milford Haven, and we can support the view that we're very dependent on the oil industry, there's no doubt about that. And having worked in a job centre in Milford Haven, which was affectionately known, known as the joke shop, because we had very few jobs in which to actually advertise, people got into a three-year cycle. They worked on a shutdown for six weeks, came back to work three years later when the shutdown came again. And they got into a cycle of dependence, but that cycle was three years in length. So I think we've got to look at that in terms of the population base that we're working with. And as you can see, in terms of the areas around the LSOAs again, 3% um, fall within the 10% most deprived in Wales. And obviously we've got areas of deprivation in the market town of Half-Arrest, the Garth area, people not associate Half-Arrest with any kind of deprivation and obviously the areas around Moncton and Pembroke Dock. But in terms, I'm not going to go through these line by line because I'm conscious of time really, but the glue that sticks all this partnership work together is the single integrated plan of which we have one in each county. And it was interesting really that when we were preparing for this conference that we started to draw out key fundamentals from those single integrated plans, which we've all approved, which we've all signed to, they've been to our health board, but did we realise what they actually said? And it was only when we drew these out that we were already signed up to the agenda, in name at least. Today will mean that we will mean it and we will take it forward proactively. And you can see the issues around tackling poverty in Carmarthenshire, very robust, very dynamic in terms of its regeneration. There's no doubt about that. You've only got to see some of our town centres in Carmarthen in particular, of all the work that's ongoing. But I think the whole issue is around it surrounds a number of key issues supporting people back into employment or further training through Communities First programme, we've already alluded to the, to the huge amount of work that's already going on there. Maintaining a fair and equitable trading environment, you know, encouraging small businesses, encouraging social enterprises, is all part of the work that we should be doing. And if we've got a task in hand, it's surely the last one there, enabling access and signposting to information and counselling services, including debt and welfare benefits, bereavement and relationships, but back to credit unions. I think that in, in itself, you could group that together as a fundamental piece of work that we can do with credit unions. And then there's a key question for Carmarthenshire and Single Integrated Plan. 
How will we know we have made a difference? It's the same as me. It's a great day today. They'll say, yeah, lovely. We had a lovely lunch. We had a really good networking. Whatever happened at that conference? I hope that won't be the case with today's. I could, Leslie was telling me during the break, you could hear the buzz. The networking was huge in terms of the agenda, and we're all here for the right reasons. But the issue is around housing provision, employment rates, gross weekly full-time earnings for people, the average annual household income in the, in the county, all these are keys to key performances, key areas of indicators of how well we're doing. Children living in workplace households, the rates, can we bring it down, what do we need to do? And how we encourage small businesses and businesses to start up, and how we manage the whole issue around town centre regeneration and closures. Kennedy Gunting and Integrated Plan, again, covers sort of four main key areas. And I'm sure that the people in the, in the audience who know far more about the detail that goes into this. But in terms of issues around challenges, it is around supporting families. And you'll see there are a wide cross-section of areas there in terms of the challenges. There's the rurality issue. It's fantastic living in a rural area, but you can become isolated by virtue of social isolation, not working, and access to services is always going to be a key element. The significant difference in education achievement and children in receipt of school meals. I think I'm right in saying that the Estin report for Ceredigion not so long ago was excellent. There was no doubt about it that, it, that they were performing in, an, in a fashion that it was, it was the envy of Wales in terms of that performance. But we've still got areas where we have got deprivation issues and education of our children is actually influenced by that. And then the issues around the priorities, I think the whole issue there, obviously, around the welfare reform is to develop this seamless multi-agency early intervention. We're not good at it in health. We're, very, we're fairly good when it comes to crisis, when people are ill. We are good at that. I think we can safely say that. But we're not good at finding out vulnerability about individuals, our own population, early enough to make a difference. And I think this is what today is all about. Um, and the issues around support families into employment and mitigate the effects of poverty and deprivation and then closing that educational gap amongst groups within, within the county. And the whole issue around welfare reform is, you know, one of the key issues is reduce the dependency of people on the, ben on the benefit system as a whole. Independent living, a strong feature in terms of Keredigion's um, single integrated plan. And obviously we'll see later on the extent of fuel poverty and the work that's already been gone that's been actually sort of taken forward on a partnership basis in Kerry Gion is one that obviously stands out as a beacon of good practice. And the priorities identified, issues around affordable homes. Kerry Gion, for all its beauty, has very low, very poor standard of, of housing, particularly in the private sector in rural areas, often people living on their own. I think it's an issue that we've got to try and tackle that element. But as Ian said earlier on, it's something that we have to work into until we see it's not something, there's no quick fixes in terms of that element. And promote energy efficiency and working together to develop reports to recognise and mitigate the impact of the welfare reform changes, which obviously has seen um, a great deal of increased activity with agencies who offer financial advice. Pembrokeshire, four strands here in terms of the work that they're doing, cross-cutting issues across the local service board again, Key action in terms of children and families, um, no surprises there in terms of the, the, those that are disadvantaged by poverty. It is about coordination, it is about multi-agency, and as we said earlier on, you know, partnership is something where you actually give something into another service to increase and improve the quality of life for the citizen, and that's something we have to get right in terms of taking this work forward today. And the health and well-being obviously is key is to develop services that shift this focus into this preventative agenda and at the same time we've already seen close links to the standard of housing and to, and to people's health. It doesn't need any more research to tell us that if people live in a nice house with no dampness which has got heating of, a, of an adequate standard they're less likely to be ill than people who are living in a damp environment with no heating. And I think we, this is a time of doing as opposed to looking at reasons of why we can't change things the health board and the next one is economy you know develop and deliver employment initiatives difficult times in terms of doing that at the moment uh, but something has to be done and I think in terms of in terms of reducing barriers to work we're doing a lot of work at the moment with um, bus companies uh, and patient transport into hospitals etc to ensure that access 
is as straightforward as possible in terms of people living in rural communities and particularly for those people who want to get into work so that's a key area of work but at the same time we've got to support our own staff both in statutory and voluntary agencies in developing their own skills and that's a key element of where Pembrokeshire are going in terms of the economic factors that they face and the environment obviously there's issues around ICT systems, the rurality issues, access to broadband in some areas is non-existent still. There's areas that we need to look at how we can improve ICT, ICT systems, but at the same time acknowledge that there's a fundamental lack of coverage in some areas. And the issues around public transport is a key area. There have been huge cutbacks in Wales in the last year or so around public transport, and it is a key area of work. Most of the times, I think we find we're battling against each other. At the, at the time that those cuts are actually taking place, we've had the opportunity to work with community transport associations, but there's no finance to support and sustain those services. And I think Pembroke have seen that as a key element of the work that they're doing around their community transport initiatives. So, in a nutshell, really, it's um, that's the picture. It's not all doom and gloom. There's lots of excellent work going on already in terms of the financial inclusion agenda across how well that and the more I hear today the more encouraged I get in terms of what we could be able to uh, take forward after today um, but it's a wide-ranging agenda isn't it in terms of the well-being element uh, and as I said the concentration on the prevention and well-being element is probably key sustainability though is the key for me in terms of investment around credit unions we have got a support for life grant which we hold within the health board which is part of our charitable funds committee uh, network and last year, we were able to pump prime the voluntary sector around three key themes to the tune of £90,000, which was great, but the funding was only there for one year. What I'm hearing today is the sustainability model of pump priming is of little use unless you have an agreement for at least three years. And I think that's the way that we need to look at that. But what I will do in terms of the, the Support for Life grant by October is to look at the, the key themes we looked at last year were about care closer to home, uh, and the, the general well-being agenda and one of the key themes for next year will be around financial inclusion so at least we have some opportunity to tap into some pump priming elements to ensure that communities working with people like one voice wales and other areas to ensure that we've got an opportunity of getting that community infrastructure because as that gentleman said earlier on the link between the communities themselves and the ownership that local citizens have is fundamental to doing whatever we can in terms of promoting that element but we have to make a very clear understanding as a health board that it isn't tokenism. You can see the win-win situation from the minister today. There are, huge, there are less reasons really for not doing it than there is for ever doing it. And I think if the will is there, I think it's something that we can take forward. From my perspective as well, I see there was the frontline advice service funding that's just come out. Have people seen that? That's, a, you know, that's another avenue that we need to look at. We have two part-time fundraising officers within the local health board who I line manage. They, they, their targets, their elements could change dramatically by the work of the credit unions. They could concentrate on other areas while we're fundamentally looking at something similar within our health board. So that gives us opportunities. Um, but I think the key element from today for me is that we do, we've got the statistics, we've got, the, we've got Leslie's research, research. It's how we take it forward. And I think by, by half past three, I'm banking a lot on half past three, aren't I? But that we will have a clear way forward. And I hope the facilitated groups actually will have that opportunity. But what we will drive the agenda back through our three local service boards. This is the most senior group we have in each of the three counties and the members here today. And there will be a report. We, are, we might well even do a presentation from today at each of the local service boards to further raise the profile of credit unions and the way that we work together in the coming months.